hot mess. So I leave to StitchCon tomorrow. I have absolutely no idea what I'm in for. Um, I'm freaking out. <laughs> And I am finally understanding what it's like to be more introverted than I thought. Uh, I'm ready to like cancel everything, not fly. If you don't know anything about me, uh, number one is that uh, I hate flying. Um, so I'm freaking out about that. I'm freaking out because Gaspacho is going to a dog sitter. I know. I just, and it's new dog sitter, new city, new everything. It's a lot of newness. But everything's gonna be okay. We manifest it. We say that good things are coming. And I guess I'll just document this journey. So I made it, um, the flight was okay, but I have crippling flight anxiety and I made it. And I met Riga in person and then we waited forever for a rental car and got to the hotel and checked in. And then we went and had Japanese food um, and now I'm exhausted. <laughs> So I am getting ready for bed and I guess I will have more things to update you all on tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Where are we going, Rika? Starbucks so that you see you can, can um, So I can wake up. Wake up. Look at me, I'm dead.
So this isn't my normal spot to record at all, but I'm in a different couch in my hotel room. I decided that I was gonna sit down and vlog some feels um, before continuing on with my day. So today is day two. I can genuinely say that this has been an unreal experience. And if you're watching this and you're not part of the cross stitch community, you don't have a hobby per se, um, you may not understand this 100%, so bear with me. But I think like 90% of the people who are watching this are watching this because they either share the craft or they enjoy a hobby or they're my family, so they would totally understand, uh, or really close friends. So I think, I mean, overall we should be good. So let me start off by saying that it was a terrifying experience. <laughs> I So one, my background is I have never been to a retreat before. I have never even stitched together with someone in the same room. Um, I've always had this as my isolated hobby. Uh, I would stitch with another person, but they weren't stitching at the same time. And when I geek out about the materials I'm using or a pattern that I have or, you know, my accoutrement, <laughs> my little accessories and stuff, no one really grasps it 100% unless you're in the community, which is normal for any hobby. So to come into an event, I'm not sure how many people are here, but it's a lot of people. To come into an event as your first time and not knowing what to really expect, it's weird. So I will confess <laughs> that on the first, before all of this, I knew for a fact that Rika from House of Stitch and Stash was coming and her and I, um, she and I, she and I talked near daily during 2020, especially when I was on an island. When I was still in Nassau, we talked all the time. Um, I had nothing to do. I was without work. Um, my husband would go to the office and Rika was in a similar situation as me. So I leaned on her a lot during those times. Um, and so when I knew she was coming and I was going to meet her, immediately she was going to be my emotional support human. Um, I texted her and basically said, I don't know what I'm doing, just take me under your wing and I will not leave your side. And she's done that. I mean, she took me under her wing <laughs> and then just kinda, okay, bye, um, in the most nice way because then you start seeing the faces that you have either been watching or chatting with virtually and it's like you've known them all along. It's really strange. There are some parts where you're like, oh wow, and I'm sure this has happened to a lot of people with me. You're either taller than I thought or shorter than I thought, um, especially me. So I'm 5'2", I'm a shrimp, <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of people who like saw me in person were like, oh, <laughs> your personality is much bigger than your size. <laughs> Yes, it is. Um, and I'm still as awkward as ever in the most, you know, awkward, quirky way. It's just me. Um, so night one, <laughs> I came in Wednesday. I have a terrible fear of flying. I've mentioned that a million times probably throughout this vlogging, but it's just, it's a thing. So I'm already shaken up from traveling and I've been traveling my entire life, but it just, it doesn't go away. It's just some, it's a part of me. It is what it is. Um, so I'm already shaken up, so when I get to Ohio and I see Rika and everything, it does, it's kind of a surreal experience. And then when I got to the hotel, I was still kind of jittery and like, you know, I don't know, it was like happy jitters, but like nervous jitters. We were going to go to dinner and when I checked into my hotel room, I like put my stuff down and then I went downstairs through the kitchen area. And if any of you were at this table, I am so terribly sorry, I apologize there was a group of stitchers at a table in plain sight <laughs> and I freaked. So because I freaked, I like dashed through. I didn't say hi. I didn't look at what they were stitching. It just scared me to see stitchers 
in the wild. <laughs> it scared me. I was like, no, too much. So we went to dinner and basically like my first experience with talking to stitchers and talking to other people who do the same craft as me was yesterday with a bunch of people. I walked into this gigantic conference room. There's tables everywhere. Um, and I don't know, I, you know, I had, so the other person that I knew um, was coming alone and had reached out to me was Kate, Madam Ice. And so we made, I guess like a little trio. We met up it, and it just so happened. Like I, we came to the hotel and we saw Kate. Kate had her luggage cause she was staying at a different hotel. So I was just like, Meh, just go up to my room and put your luggage here and just go and enjoy it. And we'll take care of it later. So that's how we kind of formed. And then when we go into the convention center, we just found an open table towards the back and we just like set our stuff down. Rika brought a bunch of candies from Germany and like dumped them all over the table to share and be super sweet. And then <laughs> Kate had like a familiar face who was walking around. Um, she has a floss tube, I don't remember her name, but I'll put it here. Um, so Lydia, Lydia came by and it was funny because Kate said that they were sharing the same flight. So she sat down, we invited her to the table, she sat down and then shortly behind her, we had Lily. And Lily, in my opinion, she, if she's watching this, hi Lily, um, but she just like, she was floating around and we adopted her too. <laughs> We're like, are you lost basically? And we have an open seat. So she sat down to you and that was our table of five. Um, for those who were or are, and I'm understandably so concerned about, you know, being mask free and with people, it is a big round table. You're not one on top of each other. And our particular table was fully vaccinated and open and was perfectly fine. I felt very comfortable, very safe, and it was good. It's nice to start to kind of feel, I guess, what is a new norm. I don't know how many people sat at a table in the 2019 StitchCon event, but I felt that for my first time, five people to one table was great. You get to know everybody, you got to kind of chit chat and talk, and I felt like the dynamic at our table was great. It was, um, it was just very welcoming and warm and inviting, and we got along very, very well. Um, I, I can't imagine a table not, but I, who knows, I'm sure there's some. Uh, from there, so they decided to go out to lunch, but I was just on this high that I decided to stay in the convention center the whole entire day, basically, until I started starving <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, and we went to dinner and we had pho. And um, that was oh, great pho. I burned my mouth because I was so hungry, but other than that, it was great. And then from there, we came, we went to the La Quinta that has like a late night stitching room. Um, the late night stitching room was a totally different experience from the convention center room. Um, and when I say convention center room, it's not a room, it's a convention center conference room. Like if you've been to a professional conference or anything like that, it's a gigantic event with tables set up and the whole thing. But the La Quinta room, they had two rooms and there was probably like four round tables. And at the four round tables, four to five people maybe at a table, maybe. Um, at that point in time, you get to know different faces or maybe get to sit down with people that you shortly chatted with at the convention center, but you just get more like of an intimate feel, you know? Um, yeah, it's just more intimate, less people, more intimate. And the really cool part was, so uh, Pam and Steph, you know, they're, they're a huge, they're a huge floss tube. They're a huge floss tube channel. Barbara, Keepsakes, they really, in my honest opinion, have created a seamless, seamless experience. I don't have anything to judge it off of, but you know, from check-in to schedules, organization, uh, safety, I, I felt very, very good, very good about everything. I have no complaints. And the cool part was to see, you know, Pam and Steph, 
off floss tube. Um, not that they put on a show because that's not the case. You really see how they are and, and they are very, you know, that's how they are. It's, it's, it, it is what it, it, it is. What you see is what you get. But you see a different, you get to talk about other things that are maybe not cross-stitch related or maybe cross-stitch related, um, but just different. And one of the really, it was one very sweet moment for me. Um, Pam, you know, mentioned to me, <laughs> one, it was really cool that she, you know, knows who I am. That's really nice. I don't expect anyone to know who I am. And so she said, you know, I've talked about you a lot today. Why? <laughs> Why have you talked about me? And I said, what did I do? And she said, no, 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 nothing bad, nothing bad. You actually did a very, very good thing. What did I do? And so she said, you know, your how to floss tube video, I love it. And I talked about it all, you know, to several people who are intimidated to start a floss tube due to numbers, due to growth, due to the YouTube algorithm, due to so many things. And she said, what I loved about your video is the why. You know, why, why, why are you doing this? Why, why? And I, it's funny because yes, I said that in those videos, but she almost made me think about that again. And the why, why did I come to StitchCon? Why, like I took it off of, you know, my video, but the why is so important. Why did I come to StitchCon? And for me, specifically, um, so as you may or may not know, I went to the Bahamas for two years. I lived there two years. Um, 2019 was an amazing year. 2020 was a year. Um, but in, so t 2019, <sighs> I was waiting on... I was waiting on my visa, I was waiting on my license, I was not working, um, and I was stitching a lot. And I decided to create my Instagram account just to track my stitching, like take pictures of it and post pretty pictures. Um, may have mentioned this before, before any of this, the only thing that I had community-wise was Reddit, the subreddit on the cross-stitch subreddit. It's like a forum. Um, but I never commented. I very rarely posted. I just liked looking at things or reading. Um, and so Instagram happened. And I believe that it was the hashtag common threaded stitcher that got me to see new accounts and all of these things. And then I heard about StitchCon and I was like, no way. There's like a convention like Comic Con, but for stitching? Like what? And from there, I think I Googled StitchCon and I had the review videos from the 2019, which led me to FlossTube. So that's kind of how that all happened and I got sucked into the hole. But coming to StitchCon was not necessarily to meet famous big people it was to finally put a human touch to the virtual interactions that I have been having for two years. And to share an experience and a hobby with people that understand the hobby to the full extent. That's unreal. I do not want to get emotional and weird on here, so I'm not going to do that. My why to come to StitchCon was to solidify that human interaction that you don't get through the virtual part. It's, it's just so strange. So I have been as happy as, oh gosh, I've been so happy. Just, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm just so happy. And I wanted to just document a little bit of that. Um, and I wanted to get my real feels. And maybe that helps someone out there to, you know, who is intimidated to go to big events. Why do you want to go to the big event? <laughs> For me, I've never been to a retreat and I was jumping in heads fir head first, but I compared it to a comic con, which I have not been to the comic con, but there have been several small ones and it's not so scary anymore. Um, I love this 
So definitely will be attending more retreats. I will see you all around. I can't wait to meet all of you in person. Um, I'm just, like I said, very happy. So I will check in later because I'm not finishing this and I need to get moving and get productive with stitching because I have a lot of things that I gotta get done. So, no more, goodbye. editing the video so <laughs> when i said like oh this is not the end it was the end it was literally the end of the video um i'm editing and putting this together probably like a month later and i have to say that all the feels still are the feels i miss stitch con um other things i will be going to stitch west next in october so i'm excited about that one and I don't know, I would do, I don't know, I would do more like, oh my gosh, look what I got. And these are the things that I did at the freebie table and those things. But I just, it's not as important as I guess what I said. I said what I said. Um, I said what I said. One thing, so... Things that I was missing from this video. Let's do that. Missing things. Missing thing number one. Um, my stitch con souvenir. Look at how freaking cute that is. It's a corner gauge, some scissors, and this wooden little beehive that's magnetic. What? Coolest thing ever. So that has a super funny story to it. Um, Link is my homeboy, Heather. So there's the annex. I showed a little snapshot of the annex and the annex, they had like a viewing before and then you had to like go in and buy your stuff the day after. So you like window shop and then you purchase the next day. So when I was window shopping, I had to have this, like I had to. And there was like a dinosaur project bag that Heather, Link is my homeboy, wanted and um, I, we had like a pack to that whoever was gonna get in first because obviously like we went to the late night stitching room and was exhausted. I mean like you come out exhausted because you stay there until super late. Um, and then we were gonna wake up the next day. I don't remember what time they were opening, but let's say 8 a.m. So the plan was that I was gonna go in and find a dinosaur bag and this thing um, and then get it to her if she didn't make it in time. And then the opposite was going to be true too. So I stroll in like probably like, I don't know if it was eight, like eight Oh five. Right. And <laughs> the back of the annex, you have a delirious Heather because she had only slept like, I think two hours that night. And she held this up and she was like, look, I got it. <laughs> so thank you. They also did not end up selling out like right away. There was still some like throughout the weekend, but thank you. Uh, that's mad dedication. Uh, some other cool things that I didn't talk about that I really enjoyed. Um, I got to hang out with Janet Jabber in her car. We went to McDonald's. That was really cool. Another high moment that I enjoyed was seeing Carla Rolodex, my island sister from another mister at keepsakes. Um, that was another super big high. And it's not, not that anyone else is not as cool or as close, they're near and dear. They're just people that had some sort of deep emotional attach attachment with me during my life. I don't know, very strange, weird stuff. But anyway, so super happy to see both of them. And I'm excited to see who I'm going to see and meet at Stitch West in October. Um, I am pretty sure that my StitchCon review is a little non-conventional compared to others. 
but I am very happy that I vlogged and documented in the moment because I don't think that I could make a recap video as true and genuine as I did from just documenting my feels. Um, I will be recording some more content today. And so I will be uh, scheduling those to get posted pretty regularly because I don't foresee me stopping my working in overtime anytime soon. So I'm going to take advantage of recording as much as possible today and stitching it all together. <sniffs> stitching, stitching the video. And I will see you all very soon. It just will be pre-recorded soon. So big hearts to everybody. Me. I hope you enjoyed this video.